everyone. So I've got three masculine cards to share today using the supplies from, mostly from Your Creative Studios subscription box. Now we're going to start using the supplies, actually most of them are from January 2023. This is my little reference folio and you can check out the iCard for the full unboxing, but I have like a little quick reference here of what was in the box. There were some fabulous train stamps, there was a definite train theme going on, and that's why I thought they would make some great masculine cards. A paper pack, and this is just a sample of one of the papers from the paper pack, etc. So, then I have my supplies corralled within here, and we're going to pull from this set for the first card. So for card number one, of course, we're going to start with a card base. I have done mine this time top folding, just a white cardstock card base. And I have pulled a piece of kind of orangey red. It's mostly red, but it has a, it's on the warmer side, so a warm red, to match up this kind of this color in the train. And I've used a piece of cardstock that's five and a four and a quarter by five and a half, excuse me, to cover the entire front of the card base here. So then we are going to take a piece of black card stock that is cut just smaller than that, you know, so we can have a little border and we are going to use a tool. You can use the edge of scissors. In fact, I have a little tool. I don't know what I did with it. I buried it. It was just here, I'm telling you, unless, oh, I see it now. Anyway, but I'm going to show you both ways. So the best cardstock to use for this would be one with a white core. Can you see that white? Um, if you want more of the distressed look. If you don't want the distressed look, don't worry about this step. But so you're going to take your scissors and just kind of rough it up. This other tool I was talking about, which decided to go hide over here. Oh, and you're going to make a mess. So I'm going to move this so I don't... Uh, have that mess on there. This has, this is, what, I don't know who this is. E, I can't even read that. I'm sorry. Um, but it's a by Prima. So, <laughs> but I'm sure you could find a distressing tool. There's a great one. I think Tim Holtz has one. This one has like a little razor blade here. So that's kind of like the edge of the scissor there. And then it has two sanding surfaces, a more coarse and a lighter one. Um, and then, what is this down here? That is like a wire brush. It's probably not gonna focus, but so you can really, I don't wanna go that crazy on this one, but let's just distress our page a bit. And you know, you can go as crazy as you want with this. And I don't know, my idea was masculine. I think I like to add lots of color and thing, and I love the details and layers and complexity, but I feel like masculine cards tend to be a little more simple. So my way of getting my style in there without making it too feminine and floral um, is adding texture and um, sometimes like distressing so you've got like layers you got interest going on in the card you can even crumple it up if you like that look um, but yeah and it doesn't have to add a bunch of flowery colors so then we're gonna lay this down with some adhesive trying to get it relatively straight there now from the papers in our box. Whoops. Oh, that's attached. This is the vellum one. I've got it attached to a card because this was another idea I was starting. But you're going to want the one with the train on it. And we got four different kinds of paper in this paper ephemera pack. There's a little picture of each of them. So this is the train one we're going to use. And you can either use the art paper or the pattern paper. Um, and you can even get two cards or three if you did it with the vellum, although if you're putting it against, you might want to put the vellum against white before putting it on the black to uh, pull the colors out if you want to use the vellum. And the stick, you could get four cards out of this, if this um, same design. That's what I'm trying to say, because there's four different kinds of paper. So we're going to take this piece of paper and we're going to cut near the, what is this thing called? I'm completely blank, but smokestack, 
and just want like maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch above there and then the size of this is about four and seven eighths long and then we're going to cut near the front of the train you want a little bit past the train that's about an eighth of an inch yeah and then the width of this piece is three and five eighths and because I wanted as much of the terrain in there as I can fit. Um, so that's why I focus on cutting this one first and then I can cut to the measurement down here, if that makes sense. And there's, you know, some scrap pieces that you can use. So let's go ahead and put this one on. And again, we're going to try to center it here. This, I don't like this um, tape runner that I have. I bought, you know, a pack of them off Amazon but uh, it's it's not very forgiving it's a little too sticky for my non straight placement this guy I'm gonna go back to a different one but I'm using what I have so that thing's driving me nuts now we're gonna pull in some stash supplies here I have a piece of vellum so this piece of vellum is cut to one and one eighth by the width of the core card, four and a quarter. And I also pulled in a couple brads or paper fasteners. These are black. So I wanna check where I want these. The thing is, I just could not cover up this train. And that, I mean, you could use a strip of paper for this, but I wanted to see the train. I just couldn't, I could never decide on where to place it and that is why I went with vellum because I love the image it's so beautiful that's one of the harder parts of using this paper is where to cut um, unless you making a card the exact size of the paper all right so I think roughly around here and I'm just eyeballing this you could definitely measure but actually where did I put that mark right here I'm gonna make sure it's the same so I've put it I put it almost exactly a quarter inch in. Yeah, I was trying to just eyeball it, but you know, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. Let me move the card. So my my, my uh, pencil mark is very faint there. Stop it. Actually, I did I say quarter? It's like about a half inch in. Now I want to check this, make sure it looks good. That is my, yeah, I like it. So, and I'm going to grab a pokey tool here and my little pokey pad. And just to make this easier on myself, I'm just going to punch a little hole there where I've made my very faint pencil marks. And then I'm going to put my brads through. paper and fold them down don't fold them down all the way just fold them down almost because that is not the look I'm going for the legs sticking out so I'm going to show you how I dealt with that I should have had all my tools ready I have a pair of wire cutters what are these I don't know snips anyway um, and I'm gonna go underneath my little leg here and trim it as close to the part that overhangs. There we go, I got it. And then I can push this down and look at that, it barely shows. And it still holds fast. So, because we're not attaching, it's a little tough to get that off, um, anything too heavy on here and it's just attaching to vellum. So go ahead and clip those off press it down nice and flat once you've done that and then you're going to need kind of a strong adhesive i'm just going to use this double stick stuff and i'm just going to go around the edge because it does sh kind of show through this double stick tape now i'm bringing back in my little dollar store pokey tool this thing is actually pretty handy because it's got this flat edge so i can rub down my tape with the flat edge there's a little bit of dimension here. It sticks out a little bit, but I find that with the strong adhesive, it works out all right. I'm just going to take the short ends off because they're so small. And then I am going to fold up 
part of this set. Come on. All right. Now I can try to get this on here nice and straight. So I kind of wanted it just where the front of the grill of the train is. And I just, I want it to, oops, not that. See, this is why I didn't put the, I didn't open all of my tape. I'm just going to push down that side and make sure that's pretty good. Okay, I like that. So then I'm going to press it down. And then I can grab this little tail here, pull that off. And first, I'm going to push it down towards the bottom of the card. Because we have all this dimension, I don't want to end up accidentally puckering it. Oops, got a little right there. And then with this one, again, I'm going to push up. Ouch, watch out for that pokey tool. Up and away from it so that there's not a bunch of air puffed in there because of that dimension. And there we are. This is where we're going to stop with this card because this is a great spot for a sentiment. You could um, emboss, use embossing powder, but I'm going to show you what I did with the first card here. So I die cut the sentiment, happy birthday. This one fit just right there. Um, any sentiment that you have that would work for somebody who would love a train card would be great right there. I'm going to leave this one blank. That way I can put a sentiment on it when I know what I would like to use it for. All right, moving on to card number two. So for card number two, again, we're going to use the card base, top folding for this one. And then we are going to use this pattern paper, which is this one here on our little set. It's got a nice train track going through, a train up there. So we're going to cut it at five and a quarter by four. But we're going to start by cutting leaving the bottom of the paper all the way down. So the five and a quarter is cutting up here. You end up cutting off this lovely train, which you can save for a different card or journal, whatever you like there. And then we're gonna place it kind of centered here. We have a nice white border that we're working with. So let me get some adhesive and put this down. Actually, before I do that, since I'm going to use the washi tape that came in the box on this card, I think that in order to secure it more, um, keep it more secured, I'm going to put the washi on first. So let's start with, it's a nice trick because you wrap it around the back of the card and then you glue it on to your card base and it stays put no matter what. And I don't have to add adhesive or worry about it. So I think we're going to go, I'm going to be using the lines kind of on my desk treatment here for a guide to keep it straight. Because there's a lot going on and directions in this card, but it doesn't matter if you don't get it perfectly straight. So this looks pretty straight right here. I'm going to go with it. And then my washi can hold my paper down for washi number two. So this is the patterned washi, it's having a hard time focusing, that came in the box. And then this is the other one. And you know what? There's a little bit of waste here, but I kind of want to get to a certain spot. Where did it go? Here we go. Oh, and I have it upside down. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Good thing I was paying attention there, huh? Although there's another train right here. I'm just going to go a little further. And I'm going to save the extra and use this train right here. And I'm actually going to go down to this first kind of star pattern. So I'm overlapping the washi that's on there. And I'm going to press that down and trim that off and save my little piece. Then we can carefully, let's actually um, use this guy again to make sure it's really stuck onto the card. And then we'll pull the washi up off my desk and fold it back against the panel here. Oops. And you see that? There is that. And now I can glue it on. Um, 
Yeah, I did it. I'm so happy because this, like I said, this tape runner is super sticky and not forgiving at all. Now, I hate covering up this cute mountain, but it's going to have to be done. So we're going to use a focal point on this card, and so we're going to pull in one of the stamps that came. I have it on an acrylic block here. Did not want to focus, but it is Steam Locomotive 1804. My acrylic block is not amazingly clean, so sorry about that. Um, and I have pulled out a piece of cardstock that's kind of a tan color. So I'm going to go with that, and I am going to pull out my favorite trusty Versamike, Versafine, excuse me, Onyx Black ink. Oops, I just sticked my finger. Oh my goodness. Try not to ink everything. Um, I'm going to actually pick this side. There's a little bit of a wrinkle on that side. And then I'm going to stamp my train. All right, it looks good. Choo choo, chugga chugga. So this is more than I need here. And so I'm going to trim off the excess. Hopefully that's dry enough. Well, I'll just be careful. No smudge, no smudge. I want to trim it really close. I think that's close enough. I think I need to trim this side just a bit and maybe a little off the top and bottom. Alright, you can see all my little scraps here. Uh, the reason I stamp it on before trimming it is that way, if I stamp it crooked, it's still usable. I don't know what happened to my Onyx Black ink, um, so I'm just going to use the, not Onyx Black ink, what am I saying? I don't know what happened to my Oxide Black ink. I was going to grab that to distress the edges, but I can't find it, so I'm just going to use my Onyx Black ink. Um, there's a little bit of ink still on this dauber and again I just like giving it that distinction and then that extra added layer of interest but it's not floral or too crazy so if you like that look go for it you can go crazy and get it like really distressed really inky really smudgy in fact, if you have dirty fingers like me, that might be the way to go because you can hide the fact that you've gone and smudged your image. Um, but hey, yeah. And then we are going to pull a piece of nice chocolate brown cardstock, which I thought kind of went with this train track there, to uh, mount this little train onto. So I think I will, I think I'm going to put it on and then trim off the edges. Everything goes wrong once you turn the camera on record. That's not too bad, right? Okay, Whew. let's do it. Now, in order to make this sentiment really pop, I just wanted to pull in some foam, fun foam, from my stash here. I'm going to figure out, I'm going to make it just a smidgen smaller than what I have here. Lost my pencil. Dang. This is adhesive backed. Fun foam, so look at that. I can write right on the backer paper. What am I doing here? Let's do it this way. Oh, I think that's good enough. All right, then I'm gonna use wet glue to place it down on the top here. Cover up the mount. Oh my. You got like glue everywhere, girl. Okay, it's not really centered there, but that's okay. 
And I hate, hate, hate covering up the tracks, but again, you know, like that's the thing. Now, again, you can leave this blank for sentiment. This time I'm going to show you, I like the sentiment, how I did it. Um, Spellbinders card kit of the month from September 2019, Express Yourself. It basically has letters that you can die cut out that I have die cut out here, the alphabet, and now I need to find the ones that I need. All right, can you see what we're spelling out here? This is the tricky part. I know I'm going to put it on this side, so I'm going to start with the Y. And this time is a good time to use a tool such as tweezers. Get our tiny applicator of glue. Put a little glue on there and yeah. Usually I start in the middle of the word so I can balance it, but actually I think that I know where I want this. Uh-oh. So much for the tool, huh? Down, Y. There we go. Okay, it's going to stay now. And then put the rest of the word, and I will speed that part up. All right, that finishes off card number two. Little tip is that it's important, um, well, sometimes it helps if you write your word down so that you don't inadvertently miss a letter or spell it wrong while you're you know, gluing it on. And the nice thing about this washi tape here on the bottom is it's very linear, so that helped me line it up as well. All right, for card number three, we're going back. We're going to use some paper. This paper is from the January train card kit, or your creative studio box. But we're going to go back to July 2022, where there were some lovely vintage camera um, items, and I'm going to use the washi tape, I am going to use a couple of the stamps, and then also something from the paper pack. So if you want to see that box opening, I'll pop that in the corner. And here are the supplies that we're going to use. Again, this paper is from the train January box, but the stamps here and the washi, as well as this patterned vellum paper came from July. So first we start with the card base and using the nice uh, brown colored paper from the train box in January, we're going to cover that front panel five and a half by four and a quarter. And it's again the top folding. Then we are going to take another scrap of black here and it's going to go, yep, pretty much centered, but before we put it on the center of the card, this is where our lovely camera washi tape is going to come in. So I'm going to pull a strip off here. And again, I'm going to do my wrapping trick. Oops. Okay, I'm going to tilt it a little bit just so I can see better where I'm going to put things. Um, and I'm trying to go all the way to the edge of my cardstock here and then I'm going to pull off that edge and just wrap it onto the back. This is an extra long strip here but as long as, yeah, I'm just going to tear it right there because it's folded. Don't want too much dimension. All right, and then we can glue this onto our card base. This one, to me, is a little bit of a busy pattern, so even though it is somewhat linear, I'm going to try to take my time trying to find the center point. I feel like it's a little bit higher up here than down here, but it doesn't really matter too much. So, there that is. Now, for the vellum piece, I am going to put it right here. It's just kind of a background thing, and it is a little bit subtle because it has that black. And since most of this is covered up, I'm just going to use this same tape printer. Oops. Yay, that feels like it's pretty straight. All right. So we've got some interesting pattern combinations going on here. Now we've got lots of little paper 
packs and things so I pulled something that's sort of subtle with some text out because I'm going to use this and I'm going to use it kind of like a blank piece of paper and stamp this cool old vintage camera onto it. So I needed my favorite ink here. Get it nice and inked up. And then I'm going to go, I think I'm going to try to center it kind of left and right and then add that same amount of space at the top if I can. Oops, I pressed it down, so we're going with that. And there it is. It's kind of an interesting look. Oh, and you know what? To give it, I didn't prep my paper, but to give it a little more... Um, I don't know, help it to be seen some more. I think I'm going to emboss it. I'm going to use some clear embossing ink. Hopefully it doesn't stick everywhere because I didn't anti-static my paper Oops, beforehand. Let's get up close and have a nice look. It's nice and shiny. Nice vintage. Now, for this, I want to place my paper kind of here, but... I want some of this showing through. So I'm going to make a little pencil mark or something. Let's see. I think I want about there. And I'm just making a tiny pencil mark because I am going to tear. Tear the edge here. I don't want it even. I just want a certain amount of the bottom showing through. And I kind of want that texture from the torn edge. And I didn't think too much about it. So, yeah, I like how that looks. That's nice. And then I can glue this on to my paper, to my card. Hmm. Yeah, uh-oh. There we go. Straighten that out. Not bad, not bad. Okay, so to finish off this card, we have this cute little stamp from that same July box, which is like a film strip curling up there. And I have stamped it out onto a cream cardstock. I thought that went pretty well. And then we're going to fussy cut it out. I've already started this. I wanted to share a tip for fussy cutting is that you're going to have a nice sharp detailed scissors, but turn the paper and not your scissors. Many of you probably already know this tip, but I thought I'd share it real quick. And so there's my, my cute little film thing. And just an added bonus here, I'm going to grab some foam dots to pop that up because you know I love dimension and uh, different things going on so grab a couple let's see I think I can fit a big one right here and maybe a couple small ones yeah that doesn't look too bad and then pull the backers off then we can come back in with our dimensional film roll and just put it right there in the corner. Makes a nice little accent. And this card is a great all occasion masculine card to give. Quick and final look. I made two of each of these, but if I wanted to use all of the papers that we had in the kit, I could have made four of at least some of them. I'm not sure about how much of the supplies that for the other ones. And then these two. Thanks again for watching. I hope you found some creative ideas, maybe some tips you hadn't thought of. And I hope you have a wonderful and creative day. Bye!